All right, welcome back. It's been a while, but this is day 14 of the Run It Up Challenge on DraftKings. It is actually January 7th. It's a Wednesday, 2015. So this is the first video of the new year. Uh, thanks for thanks for hanging hanging around um, with the holidays and you know some other actual real life responsibilities. I took about a week off uh, from getting another video out. So uh, it's been a while. If you've been waiting, you've been waiting patiently. So thank you very much for doing that. Uh, so let's hop back into it. So we need to catch up on where we're at. And to be honest with you, it's not pretty. Uh, the bankroll is at sixty five dollars. We have basically. Uh, whiffed almost everything for the past five days. Um, it's it's variance. It's obviously daily fantasy sports is not always going to be roses. It's going to be you know, there's going to be a lot of ups and downs. And when you're running out one lineup, there is a little more inherent variance because uh, you know you usually win a lot together or or lose a lot together. So we've put together basically. Uh, quite honestly, five bad lineups in a row. Um, ones that, a couple that we've gotten unlucky with, a couple that were just bad, some that underperformed. But at the end of the day, it's five bad lineups, and uh, we're we're in a bit of a hole here, but not not anything that we can't dig out of. So we're going to continue to go through the process, uh, which is what I always preach: is just good process. We don't um, we don't tilt, we don't make any rash decisions with the bankroll. We continue to grind it up and uh, do what we have to do to make some cash here. So uh, what a day to get back into it because it is a Wednesday night in the NBA and there's 13 games tonight. I think there's 13 games tonight. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 games in the NBA. Massive, massive slate. So uh, what that means is there's just a ton of players to talk about. There are... There's a lot of good value plays. Um, it would take us forever to go through everyone, so let's make sure that we just touch on a few here. Uh, but let's start with the lines for this evening. So here they are. Um, anything that really jumps out on me is there are a couple games with blowout potential. This New York-Washington game is very, very intriguing for daily fantasy players simply because the Knicks are decimated. Absolutely decimated with injury. Doesn't look like Amari or Carmelo is gonna are gonna play. They just traded uh, Shumpert and J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith. So it's really uh, I don't even know who's left to play in New York. I would assume that Quincy AC is in play, although I know that his price uh, jumped up. I think almost two thousand dollars on DraftKings today. So he's a little bit of a risk because of that. Um, Tim Hardaway Jr. I guess is the guy that you want to go with uh, if you're really interested in picking somebody on the Knicks because he's the guy taking the shots right now. So he's probably the safest play, but it's uh it's against Washington. It's a 14 and a half point line. This could be a blowout. Uh, a lot of me wants to stay away from this, but if you're a little riskier than I am, um, there are a couple of Knicks to roster for this evening. Okay. Uh, moving right along. The biggest line of the night, I believe, yes, is right here, the Minnesota Phoenix line. So I like a couple of the guys in those in that game specifically from the Timberwolves, so we'll get to them. Uh, but that is the largest line of the evening at 217. It's you know what I would consider close to blowout potential, but um, not not bad at all. Minnesota's at home. I, they, I think they'll probably play better than that. So there's there's definitely fantasy value to be had in this game. Um, let's see. Chicago's a 10 and a half point favorite over Utah, but I still think there's a couple of good plays on Utah. A couple of good value plays we'll get to. Uh, the one that I, I'm dying to see, but I'm also a little scared of is the 10 and a half point line in the Clippers and Lakers game. So we'll get to that, but that's a 215 line. So that's your second biggest of the night. Um, there's a lot of, you know, there's only a handful of lines over 200. The 211 and a half line for Sacramento, Oklahoma City is interesting. Um, we'll talk about a couple of those players as well. So nothing really to avoid, although I'll probably avoid the Knicks and maybe some of the star players on the Clippers, but to be determined. Okay. Oh, and real quick, my, my biggest concern um, isn't necessarily the line in this Golden State game. It's the pace of it, which I expect the Pacers to the pacers, uh, to kind of keep it uh, pretty slow. So not loving that game. But let's get to it. Uh, we will go um, 
yeah, we can go position by position like we always do. Or we could go, you know, let's start here with some of the big-name players. Um, Durant is the most expensive guy on the board, which um, I can't love. I can't really love it. Um, Kevin Love would have been a nice pick uh, since LeBron's going to be out again, but it looks like Kyrie Irving is going to play. So he's not as great of a pick as he was before. I love DeMarcus Cousins tonight. Uh, Steph Curry would be pretty good. Russell Westbrook um, has not had three good games in a row. So again, this is the guy we need 50 or 60 points from. And uh, with the production of Kevin Durant, Westbrook has kind of been on the back burner a little bit. And he's still throwing up a ton of shots. And he's just not shooting well. So... Um, Oh, yeah, here it is. Last four games, he's 24 of 80, which is a 30% shooting percentage, which is not good. So uh, he's a guy who can turn it off or, or turn it on at any moment and, and break out of this slump. But um, I don't see it tonight, especially with uh, Durant back. It's just a little too risky for me. Uh, James Harden also is a guy who I don't know if he's suffering from Josh Smith being on the team, but uh, three poor games in a row. You know, you. You think he'd, he'd get up for the matchup tonight with Cleveland, but I'm not sure that that's what it's all about. I think that they're going through some turbulence and trying to figure out what their identity is with a couple of new players. So um, James Harden may not be the safest play again tonight. Uh, as always, uh, John Wall is an interesting play at home if you're not worried about the blowout. I love Chris Paul. If, if you're willing to risk the blowout, Chris Paul is the, the top guard for me tonight because um, he's 9,700. He's, he's, he's not... There's a couple of guys more expensive than him. Um, and against the Lakers, it's just an absolute prime matchup. So if you're going to roster a guy who's in a potential blowout game, I think it's Chris Paul. Um, okay, so let's go position by position here. I think that's probably the better way to do this. Um, and we'll go through a couple at each level. So what? here are my... Um, can you see this? Let me take out a couple of these so you can see. That didn't, oh, there we go. Sorry. Okay. So, um, what we're looking at here is my top plays for this evening. One is Kevin Garnett, uh, Joe Ingles, Tony Allen, just to name a few. Um, Reggie Jackson's up here. You can ignore this. This is still, you know, he played a lot of those games without, um, without Kevin Durant. So his value is not nearly as high as this, uh, as this pro projects. Russell Westbrook, same thing. A lot of his uh, uh, production was with... This is... Majority of his production is without Kevin Durant, so I, I don't love him tonight. Um, so after plugging in my projections, the optimal team that we got first off the bat is this one right here. Optimal team number one. My algorithm has it pumping out 283 points. Um, it has Reggie Jackson, who we already nixed. Um, it has Jody Meeks, whose sample size is not the biggest... Um, and Russell Westbrook, who we already talked about. So I've said it a, a bunch of times. I don't take this, uh, as just, you know, testament, so to speak, and, and just run it out there no matter, no matter what it says. So I use it as a little bit of a foundation. So there are some good plays in here, like Joe Ingles, who is seeing a lot of production lately. I think he could be a good play, seeing a lot of minutes with, um, Alec Burks being out. So he could be a good play. Uh, Rudy Gobert, same thing. They're on the same team. Not sure if you want to roster two bigs from the Jazz, but it's an option. Uh, do love DeMarcus Cousins tonight. He um, projects very well for me. Let's see if we can find him here. Um, 5.2 times value, but when you get a guy 5.2 times and his, value, and his salary is 10.7, um, that's a big night. So I've got him for 55 tonight. He would need 59 to justify five, 5.6 times his value, but, um, not a bad play at all. Really like DeMarcus Cousins. Okay. So let's start constructing these. Um, I told you, I think Chris Paul is my top play of the night. I like Ty Lawson as well in a matchup against, um, Orlando who does not guard the guards very well. Kyrie Irving is interesting to me because I think he will want to um, shoulder a lot of the load tonight with uh, LeBron being out. Uh, going a little bit down the list here, 
Uh, Jarrett Jack is a guy that his price tag is flying through the roof, but Darren Williams is out again tonight. Let me confirm that. I'm pretty sure it is. He's doubtful technically, but um, I don't think he's going to play. I thought I saw somewhere on Twitter that he was listed out tonight. Okay, so Jared Jack then becomes a huge or a big time play. He's going to play huge minutes. He played 44 last night or uh, two nights ago with Williams being out, and he put up 40 fantasy points. So we don't need 40 fantasy points from him. We need at least 30. Um, and I think he can do it. You can see when he's gotten the minutes in the last 10 games, he's really produced. So Jared Jack is an interesting play, a guy that I would want to plug in. Uh, pretty safe at the point guard position. Alfred Payton is another guy, uh, keeping continuing to go down the list, who is a little too high risk for me. Um, he showed on the second against Brooklyn what a game he had, almost a triple-double. Uh, 51 fantasy points. You're not going to get that every night. Um, you need like 25 or 30. And he's really coming around in an NBA, in an NBA way. Um, Fantasy-wise, he is great some nights and not so great other nights. So he's he's a little high risk, but this could be a, a very good matchup. That's a game with a, with a high pace. I would expect a lot of points to be, to be scored. Um, same goes for Mo Williams. So he's back now. Um, he's been playing better. He's been taking, uh, his, his handful of shots. And this is the game with the highest total of the evening. And Mo Williams might be a guy who plays above what his, uh, his averages say, cause there should be so many possessions tonight. So Mo Williams viable option. Um, continuing to go just down the list here. So those are kind of your middle guys. Um, I've seen some people touting Marcus Smart and Della, Della Dova tonight. Um, they don't really, you know, tickle my fancy as much as they do other guys. Uh, that should probably be it. Yeah, those are really the only guys that really um, I would consider rostering tonight. Okay. So moving right along to the shooting guard position. Get back up to the top. Um, I expressed my concerns about James Harden. One guy that I want to make sure I talk about is Kobe, who this could be your marquee Kobe Bryant shoots 30 shots tonight. So he, let's see, I think his minutes were reduced. Okay. So he hasn't played since the fourth. So today's the seventh. Uh, it's a game in LA. So they haven't traveled. It's a road. It's an away game technically, but they didn't travel. Um, they get to play against the Clippers. It is. I think it's the national game tonight. Uh, I mean, anytime the Clippers play the Lakers, it's going to be a, a, a crazy environment there at the Staples Center. I think this is a game where Kobe goes in, and tries to um, be Kobe of a couple of years ago, and I think he's going to take a lot of shots. I this is kind of a gut play, but I think Kobe could be a a really interesting play tonight. Um, to, to do something crazy, and I think he's just going to try to take this game over. So that's that's my thought on it, uh, assuming that they can the Lakers can keep it close enough or close for long enough uh, in this game. Jimmy Butler's just a freak. Um, and speaking of freaks, the Greek freak is has been really, really good. Back-to-back double-doubles, um, 16 and 12 in both games, and... You know, he's looking really good, and he gets a prime matchup against the Sixers tonight. So he would be a guy that is well worth rostering. Saw a couple people interested in Aaron Aflalo. He's not a bad play. A little too risky for me. His, I mean, it, it, without with the exception of just... Uh, the last game, he's been, you know, kind of mid twenties, which is not really gonna do it for us. So, barring him having some big game against his old team, um, if you buy that narrative, I'm not really into him. Oladipo's been really good. Victor Oladipo, um, we're gonna need 30 points from him, and you can see he's done that like five or six times in the last ten games. Really, really coming around. Um, I like him tonight. Would prefer I would prefer the Greek freak over him slightly, but Old Depot is eight hundred dollars cheaper. So whatever you can fit into your into your lineup. As I mentioned, Tim Hardaway Jr. is available this evening. 
Um, that's about it. Those are the guys I'd really like to roster. So let's plug in. Uh, let's plug in somebody here. Let's plug in Tim Hardaway Jr. I know he's probably gonna be a popular play tonight, but it doesn't make it wrong. This might not be the final the final lineup, so we'll plug in uh, Tim Hardaway for now. Uh, one guy before I forget, as far as forwards go, is Luke Mbamute. So hasn't played. I think um, somebody had him projected at like twenty eight minutes tonight. One one of those sites out there that projects projects minutes had him at twenty eight minutes tonight. I think he's gonna play. This is a guy I'd really like to keep an eye on. Um, because if he plays tonight, I think he ends up being a really good option. So he is price dropped, um, from 4,300. He's been kind of hovering around the mid fours all season long and he drops to the minimum tonight. So, uh, Luke Mbaamute is a guy that I would be interested in if he's playing at $3,000 because you only need, if he scores 18 fantasy points, which he's more than capable of doing. Uh, no matter basically no matter what the minutes he's going to be a solid play so I want to plug him in but this is an absolute keep an eye on uh, Mba Mute okay uh, so other options if he doesn't play discuss these guys up here I actually think uh, Draymond Green's price is finally getting a little too high the guy I love the guy I mean don't get me wrong I love the guy he's just a 40 point machine but it's just a little too high if he was at 8,000 and it was a better matchup I'd like rostering him even at 8,500 if it was a better matchup I'd feel more comfortable rostering him but I just don't like this matchup the line is scary because it could be a blowout and the pace also concerns me so I will be avoiding Draymond Green tonight the two that really kind of um, tickle my fancy are Shabazz Muhammad and Andrew Wiggins, both at 6,400, both small forwards, both for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, so how are we going to choose between which one? Well, honestly, it's personal preference. Play them both. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I think one of these guys has to be in there. It's the highest total of the evening. I expect a ton of points to be scored. Andrew Wiggins has been doing a lot of the scoring lately, um, really coming into his own. So he's the guy that's going to get the majority of the shots. And you can see, so we're looking for 30-plus uh, points from both of these guys. And obviously they can do it. I mean, five of the last six, I think Wiggins has gone over 30 fantasy points. So he's a great play. Shabazz Muhammad, same thing. Uh, doesn't take takes just a few less shots a game but uh you know he rips boards he he gets assists he's just a big time player too so either one of these guys take your pick um if you made me choose i'd probably lean wiggins i think he's a little safer but like them both so can't go wrong with there not playing josh smith uh, guys toxic not playing josh smith um let's see who else we have here Tony Allen. Okay, so at 3,800, Tony Allen becomes an interesting play. Now, he's coming off a big 34-point fan fantasy point game uh, two nights ago, but he had seven steals. So you're you're not expecting seven steals a night, but he is averaging, I think, close to two and a half. So, oh, right there, 2.2 .2 steals a game. So that already raises his floor a little bit. He's going to score you a handful of points. That gets you closer to value. He's going to pull a couple boards. That gets you closer to value. So, I mean, he, he's a solid play. I mean, we're looking for 20 to 24 points from him. I think he's capable of doing it. Uh, he's only 3,800. I, I, you could you could say he's got the hot hand and see if he can back up a good performance with another one. Uh, so, Tony Allen, I would not mind plugging in. So Mike Miller, uh, even with the opportunity of guys being out, um, hasn't really shown too, too much for me. Uh, I would prefer to just avoid. I know some people have uh, – I read everything on the, on the internet, and some of it's great, and some of it is honestly just crap. But um, I saw some people touting Mike Miller. Okay, Joe Ingles. 
Inglés, Joe Inglés. Uh, okay, so he's getting a lot of run with Alec Burks being out, and he's taking advantage of it. So um, you see in the last two games, 20 points and 32 fantasy points. He's only 3500 bucks. so... Um, you know, that's plenty of value. I do have concerns that it's going against Chicago, but I think he's good enough here to kind of plug in and save some salary for the big guys. So he would be our second forward. So let me um, let me plug in a power forward, and it's going to be another, um, another value guy, and it's Kevin Garnett, who I discussed is um, my top – he's not my top projected score guy, but he's my uh, highest value player for this evening. Um, confirm that he's going to play, which I'm sure he's going to, but uh, technically listed as questionable on uh, on Roto World because he rested Monday. So did not play Monday, basically so he could play this game. So this is Kevin Garnett at 3400 bucks at home off of rest going against his former team. Uh, I think there's a lot a lot of good things pointing in the in the direction of Kevin Garnett tonight. He's by. I don't think he's gonna go blow up and score you forty fantasy points, but we we really only need eighteen to twenty, which he's more than capable of doing. Um, if he scores you twenty points, I think you're very happy. But I think the narrative is one that I agree with, and that he could perform very well tonight. Um, I like him off rest a lot. So Kevin Garnett, I'm plugging him in. So now we have actually got some serious money to work with here. We went pretty cheap. Um, and we have 9,500 per player left. So with that being said, I told you who one of my favorite players was, and he's a guard, and it is Chris Paul. So Chris Paul, 9,700, boom, we bang him in, right? Talked about that. At center, we can spend, okay, Andre Drummond has been great. Thank you, Josh Smith, for leaving, because now all this guy does is just put up massive numbers. Now we're going to need close to 50 points from him, um, but I, if you've ever heard me talk about Tyson Chandler, which I'm sure you have, if you've ever listened to this before, guys who just rip boards like him, I just love cause it raises their floor so much. So, um, <coughs> excuse me there. Um, Andre Drummond could be a guy that we plug in at center. Uh, I, I told you I liked DeMarcus Cousins a lot. We could plug him in. Anybody else jumping out at me? I always love Tyson Chandler, so excuse me there. Rudy Gobert scored very highly for me tonight. Zaza Pachulia, who has been awesome for us over the past couple weeks. Uh, His his price tag is finally reflecting it, so a little too pricey for me there. That's about it. I mean, we've got the money to spend, so let's spend it. Andre Drummond or DeMarcus Cousins. Uh, Cousins was my highest rated player, so we should probably go there. Although, do love Drummond. And then finally, we've got $8,200 to spend on anybody else. And let's see who we like here. Um, Rondo. Could we play two centers? DeAndre Jordan could have a big night. I like DeAndre Jordan a lot. Again, he's cut from the same mold that Tyson Chandler is. He's a better Tyson Chandler. Yeah, he'd probably be the guy to go with. Brandon Knight's usage rate is way up recently, and he gets a prime matchup in Philadelphia, so uh, don't be afraid to roster him. But we've got a little bit more money to spend here. We can get a guy who's a little safer, so we will plug in DeAndre Jordan. So there you have it. That is... uh, Maybe not tonight's lineup, but there is a possible lineup for this evening. So I will tweet it out. It is at Rick Run Good on Twitter. Uh, we're back. Welcome back.